the producer. <laughs> but the name of the show or series that that song is from, you buzz in, oh, and you check. If you're right, you get three points. If you're wrong, we all laugh. <laughs> you may make one guess. And after 10 seconds, if no one guesses it or no one gets it right, play the same song for 30 seconds. You may guess again on the 30 seconds, give you two guesses. One in 10 seconds, one in the 30, and then you're done. Okay? We're going to do 10 songs around. We're going to try and do about six rounds. Sound okay with everybody? Sure!
Podcast Serial 400. Funimation update with Alan Walker. What is D Greenman? Oh! Uh, what I did, I mentioned this at the start. Only the names have been changed to protect the voice actors. Give me the voice actor. Who is Todd Hibbercorn? Uh, Steve of many names. You're going to have two minutes timed on my, my phone, which I forgot a stopwatch, but I have a computer in my hip that occasionally makes calls when I'm not posting to I Facebook. I have a pocket watch. Oh, you're cool. You're just so low tech. <laughs> oh, I like my pocket watch. Yeah, I know. You don't have to reboot your pocket watch. So, your anime is Prince Joy, which must have a monster trying to fit in with normal people and an alternate universe. <laughs> You've got to define it. Okay, fun stuff. Okay, so Prince Joy is the new hit anime that's just come out from Japan and made it to North America. Basically, it takes place in an alternate universe where the Victorian era British Empire traveled to the stars and conquered them with their sailboats that travel through the sky, obviously. Anyway, so basically on one of these planets called Aquarius, they find a species that is basically like Cthulhu, Except with goat legs instead of, you know, fin stuff. So, basically they wipe out all these guys because they're British, you know, what else are you gonna eat? You're either gonna enslave or wipe out the natives of that area. And, but they miss one, one of them. Because he, unlike the rest, gets the amazing idea of wearing a spy mask. <laughs> so this spy mask wearing Cthulhu travels back to Earth with the British and tries, and has to live in, in uh, you know, with, yeah, cohesion with the nice British humans that are living on Earth. Basically, it's a comedy series. One minute. One minute? Okay. It's a comedy series where, in the end, he finds true love in a nice lady, you know, has some kids, I uh, don't want to get into that part. <laughs> and, uh, you know, settles down on this British empire, takes off his mask, all the people, you know, start to adore him, go, oh yeah, those guys weren't so bad. And then it just kind of ends there with that dealing with the whole thing about the rest of the species being wiped down. <laughs> Conveniently. All right, Steve, thank you for Prince Joy. Now, come on up, maybe you've got a face down with this gentleman here. Let me cue you up with some notes. All right, you then. <laughs> All right. Ha, ha, ha. Your, your anime is, can I have a drum roll? <laughs> Super Open Ocean Force Puzzle Man <laughs> that has a giant robot and an evil temple. Go. All right, so Super Ocean Force Puzzle Man is a superhero manga about a puzzle man. And he is actually a secret member of the Power Rangers. This is a side story. So he comes in in his giant puzzle robot, which is, of course, like every Megazord ever. And he is taking on all the religious people ever. He has decided he is the most ultimate atheist that has ever atheized. And he's, he's like... Atheist is now the word. Yes. And he is like, you bad people, I'm a Power Ranger and I stand for justice and stuff. And they're like, yeah, well we stand for God and stuff. So it's this giant battle between religious dark mages and light mages too, working together, which is weird, but it works, because it's awesome. <laughs> and a giant megazord. And they go at it for like 50 episodes. It's like Dragon Ball Z, but worse. <laughs> Except it's a manga, so it's 50 volumes, so Naruto, I guess. <laughs> And you know, we get some helps from his friends, you know, there's the uh, hamster ball guy in the Megazord, and there's the dust ball Megazord, and all, pretty much all the rejects they, they, they put into this, they're like, what can we do? And yeah, it, it turns out pretty good. He has a love interest, which is pretty much just what looks like an underage girl who's actually 25, <laughs> and uh, acts like she's three. How long is it? Three seconds. Okay. Um, so, wouldn't you know it, the main bad priest guy is actually an atheist as well, and it was, it was in his heart, and he wasn't sure what to do because his mother rose him as a Christian, I guess, and 
<laughs> of course, another 50 volumes of him dealing with his life issues. It kind of switches genres. <laughs> that was super an Ocean Force Puzzle Man. So, let's, let's first off, okay, let's get Prince Joy. Applause. Super Ocean Force Puzzle Man. You get to Reno and Rave Master's illegitimate love child. Let's hear it for the guys. Okay, now you folks see how it runs, you see how it goes, you use imagination, you insult everybody possible, and someone over there is raising her hands to channel the moon power through her cell phone. <laughs> Trying to get it closer to the satellites. <laughs> okay, so, the next night, I haven't announced the prize, right? You know, it's gonna really suck. But instead it's not, it's apparently Death Note Babies. Chibi Ryu. <laughs> Who would watch Death Note Babies if it actually existed? Yeah, right. Look out, we can see it. So I need to know who wants to win Ryu? Well, let's see, I am a sucker for a woman that looks too much like Lost yet is kind of cooler, so. Lady Iraq from Soul Eater, which gave us Dr. Stein. And uh, let's see, who else looks like you? Hmm. Okay, we got someone dressed as Tifa over there. Let's hear it for the least appreciated character in Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Let me ask this. Why didn't she get a fighting game or something? Instead, Vincent Valentine basically gets his gun fu angst fest. Uh, Why? Don't deserve what? Because like, men don't deserve it? No, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, he did. No, exactly what you said. No, it's not. Uh, I've seen video games. A lot of us don't deserve what's been coming out. The Bullet Storm <laughs> was awesome. Okay, so can you uh, tell us your name? Emma. Okay, Emma, and you are? Becca. Emma and Becca, I feel like Gem and the Holograms are reuniting. <laughs> okay, are you ready, uh, Emma? Yes. Okay, now this is going to be a three-stereotype anime. So it's going to be Naruto. Um, and when you have to Gem, it's not, it's not like that takes out. Okay, now, your anime is Magic Delta, which has the Bishonen, the naive guy that forgives everything, and one girl surrounded by lots of gorgeous, gorgeous Bishonen men, or as we call it, Pratir. Create that anime. Alright, so, Magic Delta is about this girl. She is, she's new to a country. She just come over from Japan to Canada, Toronto. And she's trying to fit in with school, so she's try she goes to this new school and she's just surrounded by all these gorgeous guys. And there are still a few girls in the school, and she doesn't quite get it. <laughs> so anyway, she goes on and she, she ends up making a friend whose name is uh, Carl. So <laughs> she makes best friends with uh, Carl. Her name is uh, Kiroshi, by the way. So Kiroshi makes best friends with Carl, and they go on and she ends up getting him in lots and lots of trouble. They, uh, they go on an adventure to uh, Anime North, and she, she wears a free hog sign and blames it on him. He gets kicked out of the con, but he forgives her in the end, even though he loses his badge on Friday. The whole weekend, but he forgives her. So anyway, uh, they go on lots more adventures, he gets lots more trouble, continues to forgive her, and Basically, she, she just keeps getting him in trouble. He doesn't know what to do, but he loves her. He finds out he loves her. What is he going to do? She, she tries to tell her, but he can't do it. So eventually he starts getting his friends to tell her, and it's just a really confusing anime. It goes on and on and on forever. A lot of fillers and annoying stuff that we don't like. No, anyway, no. And I, exactly. <laughs> And I, and it ends within like three episodes, a very unsatisfying ending where he goes up and he tells her that he loves her and she is actually in love with like three other gorgeous guys in school. No. So it kind of ends there. No explanation who she yeah. no, no explanation who she chooses, just the guy she's got in trouble. So many times for, he, she, he forgives her, he tells her that he loves her, and she's kinda of like, oh well, screw you. Basically. So, uh, my problem with that is only one thing. In any Japanese show where the school consists mostly of gorgeous guys, none of them are ever interested in women. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. 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 yeah, sad but true. Okay, now, Becca, 
you have to tell us about Strike Breaker, which has the competent female character rendered useless so the male character can show off, <laughs> the magical girl, and the psychic. Go. Okay, well, it's about this girl named Amanda, who um, has really, really big knockers, but gets breast cancer and has to cut them off. <laughs> so she's rendered useless, so her brother, who has great hair, and a great ass, and great abs, and everything, everyone loves her, guys. goes to the school of the previous family. <laughs> <laughs> He has to find a magical girl whose mother is a psychic so they can save the world before giant frogs, you know? And also before they spread cancer in the frogs. Is this like Sergeant Caro's dark plot? Yes. Yeah, so just check. And um, the psychic doesn't have any eyes, just kind of just like crap around her eyes, kind of like the kitchen, only cooler. And um, Later on in the anime, the sister actually has to help her brother because her brother's actually really stupid and she's really, really smart and just is really funny. <laughs> and, um, um, yeah, let's go ahead. <laughs> so the series ended in the middle. Pretty much. Uh, All right, well, let's hear it for Magic Delta. <laughs> going home with her. I've read that fanfic anyway. Oh. <laughs> so next up, uh, let's go. You can't see anything because the room's dark and there's a reason for it. <laughs> but this is the hentai game show and wow. Yeah, I gotta say, if I was to show you this, I'd have to censor things. <laughs> um, Basically, I came here to figure out what the hell was going on, and I know one of those. I know two of those. I know A and B. Which one of the four? I think A is a <laughs> Not, it's either B or C. <laughs> They're not actual head guys. C is the air gear. Huh? C is the air gear. Okay, so it's B. Yeah, it does look like. Yeah, essentially this is anime flash, except porn. And it is B. Yeah. 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 Yeah.